Hello again. Some people were asking about how a machine like this could make a read. I will show you. We will start with this machine. And this is the sanding table. There's room for two reads. A model read, which is a, a virgin, untouched, never been used commercial read that I like the shape of. Why I like the shape is you could talk about that later. I don't know. I just always used it since college. So it's a Marais two and a half, and the model read goes on this side. You can see these little lines, and uh, just line up in the middle of the table, in between the lines. Screw it down. There's our model. So this is a read copy machine. It's not a read maker necessarily. Then you have something called a read blank. It is roughly the size and shape of a read, but it doesn't have the rounded tip on it. So we're going to copy, whoop, copy the shape from the model onto this blank. And so what we have, whoop, excuse me. What I, what I do first to cure the cane is I suck on it, let it dry a whole bunch of, for a long time, a week or so. And then I sand it flat, the idea being to get rid of all of the, the, the warping that the reed is going to do. So it gets wet, it warps, then I sand it flat, and the warping is gone, for the most part, as much as possible. All the pores, all the, the xylem and phloem and things like that get clogged up, and so hopefully the reed will change very little after I make the reed. So I do this just to dry the reed off so I don't gum up my sandpaper. And then I, well, let's see. Perhaps you can see. Hmm. This is actually fairly flat already. Anyway, it's much too thick. Is it much too thick? I certainly chewed on it enough to need to thin it to thin it down some. Well, you can see I've I've munched on it a little bit, and I always sand it anyway. So even if it was perfectly flat, it would still make me happy to sand it even flatter. So this is just a piece of glass and sandpaper. You sand it until it's flat or until you feel happy. Whichever comes first. Or in my case, when I get rid of these uh, divots that I've made in the reed from sucking on it and chewing on it throughout the day. Good enough. So then I take my blank and I put it on this side of the reed table, lining it up between lines. Now this part's going to be loud, but I just turn on the machine and the sanding wheel spins. And my children are crying. And this disc allows for this shape, yeah, the, the, this wheel traces essentially the shape of the model reed across the spinning sanding wheel. And it's calibrated just so, and you can calibrate it to be a little bit closer, a little bit further away. Um, yeah, so we turn it on, the vacuum cleaner turns on to get all the sawdust. <laughs>
theoretically, there's a little bit, shouldn't, shouldn't grab the reed at all, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't turn that sanding plate at all because that should all be gone, but nothing's ever perfect. So then have that. I'm going to take this little machine called a reed clipper. I won't tell you what it does. And you line it up just so. And it, well, clips it. The shape of a reed. Had a nice pop to it. I'm gonna have some some little little stragglers on the side there, some little splinters. Just take those guys off because they're annoying. So there is a reed. Let's see if it sounds like anything. Oh, really resistant. Really have to press into the thing to get it to sound. So, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust my my thickness gauge <laughs> to be a little bit thinner so that it cuts the whole reed a little bit more but I'm only going to do the back part of the reed I'm not going to do the I'm not going to do the tip <laughs> So that didn't take off very much wood, but we are talking about thousandths of an inch, so every little bit counts. Well, that didn't make a whole lot of difference. Okay, I need to deal with these children. Okay, kids are still alive. We're good. So that reed is still very resistant. In other words, it takes, it takes a whole lot of effort to get a sound. Now it seems like a really good sound, so I think it'll it'll be a good reed once I can find the right setup for it. Okay, so I'm gonna take this down to minus four, whatever minus four is. Who knows? Here we Changed my mind. It went back to three. Get a little ridge there where I'm not going near the tip. See if that'll get me in trouble. Uh -huh. 
Which is annoying. I'm going to take some measurements of the reed. I'm going to see how thick the tip is because if the tip is thick too, then I can just sand the whole thing. This is a micrometer. It's kind of kind of a, a jerry-rigged setup. But the idea is it measures deflection away from a surface. So that's the zero down there at the bottom. It's kind of upside down, but that's all right. And we'll say the very tip of the reed is three one hundredths. One one hundredths, one thousandths. It's about seven. The edge. And seven at that edge, so pretty much right where it's supposed to be. So I don't want to touch the tip, but for some reason, it's just really resistant still. I'm going to get a little bit closer to the tip. Get rid of that little ridge. And if it weren't for a piece of tape right here, I'll keep pushing, I'll just push this thing forward instead of moving the dial down. But that's for experimenting later. I'm by no means an expert at this, I used to do this in college. A similar machine and a professional looking over my shoulder a lot of the time. Always available to ask questions. Let's see what happens. We're at minus four. <laughs> So that's a lot better. That's playable. So now I, I, I'll play a note and kind of twist the horn side to side to see if the reed is balanced. Because if, if I hear the, the sound open up or sound a little bit clearer, a little bit louder on while well, pushing harder on one side of the reed than the other, that means there's a little bit too much wood on that side of the reed. Why well, that's me turning the clarinet to the right and it the sound kind of opens up and that tells me that there's too much wood on that side. So I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper and just surgically remove a little bit of wood on that side of the reed. Which will do two things. It'll balance the reed so that it'll play better in general, but it'll also continue to soften it up so it's not quite so resistant. It's still still pretty tough to play, but at least it's more comfortable now. That's all just done by feel, no, no settings or anything. 
done there, just I think that's enough. Of course, you can always take more wood off. You can't put any back on. One might still say it's hard on the right side, so I'm just going to move the reed over a little bit to the left to put the harder part of the reed more towards the center of the mouthpiece. Let's see if that helps. So I, I still think it's hard on the right side. I'm going to sand it one more time, then I'm just going to leave it. Being a brand new reed and all, we don't want to beat them up too much. I don't think there's any science behind that statement whatsoever, but it makes sense to me. Let's not try to make too many changes all at once. That's that, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to keep a log book of all the reads I've made. And this will be read number 19. This is the, the scientific part of things, so I can keep track of what model I used and how thick the reed is and what techniques and methods and tools I got to give me the results that I got. So hopefully reproduce them better in the future. So this guy, this whole read is... 15.115 so yeah 115 thousandths of an inch thick some reeds are thicker some are thinner and that may or may not affect how I like reeds or how they cut or anything like that so that's why I'm writing them down and it was a Moray model and I went to negative four these other two reads, I only did negative one, negative two. Negative two. So this piece of wood is significantly more whatever, hard, resistant than the others. So I went to negative four. It was hard on the right, and so I shaved some wood on the right. And at this point, that's all I need to know right now. So I will now mark the reed so I know how to find him later. It's number one, nine. And then after I play on a reed, I'll polish the reed, which is that thing I was doing earlier to, to dry it off. It also works as a very fine sandpaper to make the... Uh, the reed very smooth, which kind of seals seals in the moisture, seals up the the pores, makes it feel really nice. I don't know. Not to mention, it also dries it out, at least on the surface, uniformly, so that there's no pockets of moisture anywhere. It's just like whoosh, now it's dry. So, yeah, that's it. That's how you make a reed with this machine and kind of my, my system of doing it. Dr. West, if you watched this movie, I'm sorry you had to sit through that, but let me know if I missed anything. Okay.